we'll just run through this quickly and then we'll have a discussion about um, what this uh, obviously rather quick exercise reveals for you about uh, your community in relation to the future. So I'll go through each one and then we'll just have a bit of a um, macro discussion. So number one, evidence of strong community pride and inclusive culture. Um, probably split um, about 50-50. Um, somebody made a comment to me too that um, this one really has two issues in it, that they thought that the uh, community pride and the inclusive culture were two distinctly different issues, right? So let me ask, for those of you who put uh, the weak dots here, hands up if you're weak on community pride. Okay, hands up if you're weak on inclusive culture. Okay, so everybody put the dots at least on that show of hands was... So saying we're weaker than having an inclusive culture, but we're good on community pride. Um, invest in the future, built to last. Uh, pretty closely split, but leaning a little towards uh, a weakness as, a, as an attribute in the community. A participatory approach to community decision making. The, the majority of people there perceive that as a strength in the community. Kind of interesting, this one. Um, <laughs> creatively building new economic opportunities. So overwhelmingly, the view is that that's a weakness that you have uh, as a community. Uh, deliberate transition of power to new leaders, again, uh, overwhelmingly viewed as a weakness. Um, Mayor, is that yours there? <laughs> <laughs> Just checking, right? <laughs> um, strong belief in support for education, like an overwhelming strength. So, you know, a real shared view that that's a, a really a strong um, a feature of your community. Strong presence of traditional institutions that are integral to community life, uh, a great strength. Willingness to seek help from the outside very strongly orientated towards a strength, and communities are self-reliant, um, certainly the majority there are saying it's a strength. When you look at that, what strikes you about your own quick assessment of your community? What jumps out at you about that? Sorry? Yeah, so if you think about who's in this room, Okay, there's obviously, you know, some commonality, but there's also a lot of difference. There's a very high level of agreement around a number of critical issues here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please. I think there's a lot of people that feel really strongly and genuinely about a lot of important issues but we're maybe not very intentional about how we execute on them. Okay. But maybe more reactionary, which results in a negative, negative feeling for some people. So is that like an opinion or is that something you're drawing from the, the data here? Drawing from some of it based on, there's a lot of red around like words like deliberate and... Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you might sort of questioning that there's the weakness in intentionality, right? And that's interesting because when I looked at that, I saw, I, saw a different, I saw the same thing but in a slightly different emphasis, which is when I looked at it, I was going, well, there's some attributes up here that are really about what you would call traditional strengths. And there are some attributes which are sort of really about positioning you for the future. And where the weakness is, is interestingly, is things like creatively building new economic opportunities. So it's future focused, but it's also quite an intentional strategy, right? Um, then you've got um, deliberate transition of power to new leaders. You know, what, that's, that's a kind of a future orientated uh, strategy, and that's where um, a big uh, weakness was. And uh, invest in the future built to last was the other one that jumped out at me, right? So, but then there's the real strength here is around those traditional type of uh, things like strong belief in support for education, you know, the, the presence of traditional institutions and so on. So I think part of what we're going to have to wrestle with as we go through this discussion over tonight, tomorrow, and then in the ensuing uh, community discussions is it's fine to come up with a vision, right? And it's fine to have an aspirational view of the future, but you have to think about do you have the capacity or what capacity might you have to build to be able to implement on that future? And I think what this might give us a clue to is, is some of those uh, characteristics or systems that you might need to be thinking about working on, not only just to identify a vision, but to be ensure you're able to achieve it. Okay? And there's some clues there in terms of what you might want to look at. Yeah?
Yeah. So, can you repeat the question, David? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did it, the or rest of the people here? I, w <laughs> I was asking to clarify number four. What can a, s a government in a small community like this one do to foster economic development? I'm just curious. Well, okay, so good question, right? So um, remember that this vision process is for the community, and there are other actors and players beyond the administration whose building we're in tonight. And you have uh, some employment base here, you have a chamber of commerce, you have you know, visitor attraction, there are other players, right? Um, and I think that's part of what we want to be talking about tonight and tomorrow night. And the gentleman down the back there sort of made a comment about you know, attracting in you know, people who might be part of the live and work. I, I think there's lots of opportunity, quite frankly. You know, we're seeing communities uh, wrestle with this challenge of how do we make ourselves relevant to a generation that might have quite different aspirations, quite different desires of how they live and work, and see the world in very different ways. Okay, so most of us here have grown up in a world that was defined by traditional infrastructure. So what, what happens when different possibilities become available? All right, good. So we're going to just leave that up there. And um, Juliana, we want to um, now show you some of the survey results, right? And then we're going to start to talk about uh, key drivers shaping the future. Um, and we, um, for those of you who've done the community survey, we're going to show you some of the data that you've inputted. So there's 107 people have currently done the survey. We'd love to have more. If you haven't, we know who you are. <laughs> All right, so, um, and if you did the survey, we know that it's a little bit kind of long, right? We had some of the steering committee saying, you and your damn survey, right? <laughs> Takes too long to do. Didn't you say that? Yes. And, um, but, but I said we would talk about, because we, we, what we're trying to do is find some real intelligence, right? We're trying to peer into people's perspective and, and understand how you're seeing issues relative to other issues. Because I think this is going to be really important in terms of as we frame up um, your desires and aspirations for the future. So uh, does this have a pointer on it, Jeff? It does, upper right corner. Huh? Aha, the little red thing, right? Okay, so this, um, just if you can hold still for a second, right? So this, this chart, which I'm just going to walk through with you, um, and this is, this is running live at the moment, right? So, but what we're trying to do, in, in all those series of questions you asked, we're now combining answers to three different questions, right? So on the vertical axis here, uh, this was about the nature of impact. So there were all these issues. There was issues about an uh, aging population, uh, citywide walking, retail, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and we asked people to, to talk about the nature of the impact of those issues over time, going into the future, right? So the scale is neutral to very positive to the top, and then neutral to very negative at the bottom, okay? So each circle here represents uh, one of the issue areas, and if they're below this line across the middle, uh, that means that people see that the future potential impact is negative, and the further below, it's increasingly negative, okay? And above is positive, increasingly positive. The vertical line here is sort of the middle of the x-axis, which is about, we asked the question about how well prepared do you think this community is against each one of those issues, okay? From a scale of not at all prepared, somewhat prepared, prepared, well prepared, very well prepared. So if you write, bingo. Okay, so if you're right of the vertical axis here, um, this is you know, well prepared, very well prepared. So if you're to the left, that's people saying, well, we're not quite fully prepared. We're maybe somewhat prepared, right? Um, so what we're kind of interested in this is what are the clusters of issues that are down here, and what are the clusters of issues that are up here? Because on one end down here, these are issues, oh, sorry, and the size of the circle is how important you see that issue for the future. So the bigger the circle, the more importance you associate with, with that. So what we're ultimately looking for is bigger circles that are at the extremities of that spread, right? Because if they're up, if they're down here, these are the ones that you're not prepared for, and they could have a big negative impact. So they're the ones you want to, they're the ones that could blindside you or, or undo you, right? The ones up here are the ones that you're prepared for and you think are, could have a very positive impact and they're the ones that are your current strengths, right? 
So Juliana, do you want to just hover over some of them? And when Juliana hovers over, you'll see here like the name of that uh, issue comes up. And, and we're just showing you this live, but this, uh, all this data is going to be on a, a platform that you can look at, right? So you'll be able to go in and, and do this. Um, and there'll be filters on You'll see on, there's filters on the right-hand side here. So you'll be able to filter um, all of these charts by things like age, gender, what topic areas people are interested in, um, where do people live, um, you know, are they residents, renters, so on. Um, how long they lived in the in the community and so on, right? So there's a lot of kind of really good intelligence in here, but with only a hundred people who are doing the survey, you know, obviously there's not a lot to filter. That's why when we get to see maybe more three, four, five hundred responses here, we'll have some really good, uh, interesting info. So, so if you look here, so Juliana's highlighting these uh, ones down here. These are the ones you're only somewhat prepared for. Um, potentially have a very negative impact. Uh, the trend in less brick and mortar retail and online shopping. That's one that could get you, right? You, know, you have a fair bit of your economic activity was built around a little bit of a destination uh, sort of shopping location, your downtown, sort of experiential destination. Um, traffic associated with the daily commute, and the next one there is the traffic condition, congestion associated with the high season. So people see you're not prepared for that, right? And that could really undo, I imagine, uh, some of your experience and quality of life. Loss of younger adult generations from the community, people have talked about that. Uh, housing affordability, that started to come up a little bit earlier, you were mentioning that, um, and so on. So let's jump up to some of the things. So these ones you, are ones you want to watch, right? Let's talk about some of the ones you perceive position you very strongly. So a reputation as a premier suburb of the Twin Cities, you're well prepared, potentially continued strong positive impact. Um, top regional destination, similar topic. Uh, vibrant city parks, right? You like those, right? Neighbourhood business parks, trails, lakefront uh, uh, connectability. Uh, Family-friendly amenities. So there's this really emergent cluster there. What's the next? Health and wellness. Uh, diversified and expanded recreational offerings. Entertainment options. Citywide walkability and bikeability, right? So there's that whole cluster of those issues which you've invested in substantially. You know, the Lake Effect project, that... A lot of that represents the, the work and the thinking and the activities and the investment that were in that and are coming out of that. So that little cluster there, you know, obviously that's, that's what you think you're well prepared for, you've invested in, you're just going to make a big positive difference. That's great, right? But what this data also reveals is what might be some of the, the other issues that we want to be thinking about going forward. Because the danger is, right, and I've seen this in communities, communities like you, you do a great job, right? You're all smart, you know, a little bit of hubris maybe, just the tiny bit somewhere, right? But you're smart, you've invested, you've planned well, and you just go, ripper. Let's just keep doing that, right? And that's great, except until the other things that you haven't attended to come and get you. So what we're trying to do in this uh, survey process is trying to reveal maybe some of our blind spots or areas that we see maybe emerging on the horizon that we haven't had to take care of, but we might need to looking forward. Okay? So that's uh, one of the visualizations. Um, and we want to show you another one, which is about um, speed of change, right? And so this is when do you think issues are going to impact you, right? Um, if you did the survey, you'll remember that we asked you about when do you believe these issues are going to have substantial change to your community. Um, and what this visualization does on the x-axis, it's the time that it's going to occur. So now, one to two years, three to five, six to 10, 11 to 20, or never. Um, and then we also use the very positive to the very negative. And we're playing with some other different iterations of this, but we're just going to show you these two. Um, and then again, the size of the circle uh, is, is the size of importance. And you can see here, I mean, most of the issues that are forecast, other than there's one way out here, right, which is uh, that one there is the school one, was post-secondary and technical education. Um, but most of the issues that we uh, listed in that survey, on average, people are saying that's going to uh, be substantially or significantly impacting us in less than the 6 to 10 time frame. So in terms of cycle time, you know, it starts to bring a lot of these issues much closer. So it you know, may point to some sense of urgency to have to deal with it. And some of these are right upon us 
and potentially very negative. The traffic congestion issue, traffic issues, um, less brick and mortar, so that same little difficult cluster there, loss of younger adults from the community, housing affordability, um, aging population, uh, housing options and types, and these ones here are the ones that could undo you. If you don't deal with them in the time frame of the planning that we're doing. Okay? So any, any questions or uh, kind of op reactions, observations to just those couple of bits of data that we've showed you? What's, it, what's this saying to you if you combine some of this with some of that? What's it saying to you? You could end up where you don't want to be, right? Yeah, and, and I think the, the rate of change issue points to that it could happen faster than you would wish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's a little hard to see, right? So, um, but... Big, I'm sorry. So let's, let's just quickly look at some of the top ones, uh, Juliana, up here too. The... I'm sorry, I thought it was possible. Oh, okay. Well, and we'll just show you. This will be some of the other stuff you'll be able to go into, right? Um, there's, you know, the rate of responses. There'll be how long people... So we had actually a total of 3,700 minutes of time was spent uh, doing the survey so far. So people actually were quite... Uh, thoughtful about the amount of time because there was also a lot of open-ended questions. Uh, we can do some sentiment analysis on some of that text. We're just showing you some very early stuff. Um, just to, and you'll be able to see about the respondents, um, you know, age, gender, um, the, how long they've lived in the community, so on. So you'll be able to tease that out. Part of what we're looking for is what are different views in different cohorts of the community. So you'll be able to even look at the location where people live in the community and how they might see different issues differently. Okay, um, And that's the sort of intelligence that becomes really valuable when you get into comprehensive planning because I think the trend is comprehensive plans these days are less about just one cookie cutter solution for the whole lot and more nuanced sort of neighbourhood type of uh, discussions and, and um, aspirations. Okay. But what are you drawing out of, out of the things we highlighted What's that telling you? But this will be online. This, is part of, this will be part of the, the portal, the, the, the laboratory platform that we build as part of this project. Um, and so this data will be running live there fairly soon. The statistical significance piece, um, if things are really obvious, you don't need analysis to show it to you, right? And you know, what it's trying to reveal is you know, what are some of the you know, really strong emergent views, right? And I think some of those ones we showed you, there's very clear when you have that kind of polarisation of positive, negative attributes or potential. Um, and you'll be able to look at each one of those and look at what the spread is, you know? Like some of them, there'll be a strong clustering of responses around uh, that. Some there might be, you know, it might be quite a large spread, so we're not sure. But then you can filter it by different, you know, locations, neighbourhoods, cohort profiles, and so on. You've got some real challenges to deal with, right? And, you know, and, I, and I know at the level of you know, people who are planning and thinking, there's, there's consideration going into, into those solutions to that. I, I think what this really reinforces is, is the value of this type of process, which can be quite uh, inclusive and educational of a community. Because there are a lot of potentially quite significant changes on your doorstep by your own assessment. You're saying these issues are upon us now or are going to be very soon. And, and as a community, you're going to be able to have to work out those solutions. You can't leave it to the five people who sit up here. You know, there's going to have to be some kind of deeper thinking and discussion. And that's what the visioning and the engagement process attempts to lay the framework for the comprehensive planning uh, process to give the whole process the best collective chance for you to identify and respond to or you know interact with what are these key emergent issues. Okay. And by the way, if you think you're different to anybody else, you're not. You know, in our future of Midwest Agriculture Survey, which has been running right across the whole Midwest, uh, we're also doing one on the uh, cities, future cities and towns. Um, workforce, for example, 
is the number one issue impacting people right now by the order of about 78 to 80 percent of respondents in those surveys. Uh, workforce shortage, uh, lack of workers, you know, somebody was talking about, you know, attracting in people who are going to support the, the health and wellness industry. I, I mean, we're working from San Diego to northern Maine, from Washington State to Hilton Head Island. We're doing a big community visioning process there and places in between. And I cannot take you to anywhere in this country that is not dealing with an absolute crunch point to the point where it's degrading ability uh, of work, workforce. And it's, it's numbers and people and skills. Okay, and it's probably going to get worse. Okay, so there's going to be a real interesting uh, competition around uh, skill sets. That's why I think this discussion about trying to identify what's your unique little niche and how do you go after that is very, very important. So we want to understand what do you believe are the key drivers shaping the future of YZ? And what do I mean by a driver? I mean a driver is events, trends, developments, catalysts or forces that are actively influence or cause change. And these drivers, we're going to ask you to draw from your intelligence. Okay? You know, people in this room, many different walks of life, highly educated, you know, have networks and connections all over the place. You know, our collective intelligence in here, oh, and by the way, there's um, plenty of research that shows in a room full like this of people, the collective intelligence far exceeds the smartest person in the room. So if you think you're the smartest person in the room, <laughs> and you know who you are, right? <laughs> the collective intelligence here will go way beyond that, right? So we're going to really going to tap into that. So we're going to ask you to really think, and again, it's not about, there's no right or wrong answers. But we want to understand what do you think might be the 20 or so major drivers that are going to impact your future. Well, we want to first give you a chance to um, share your top driver, right? So the number one driver, and we're going to go around and collect those, and then we'll go around and collect the, the second and third levels until we build up uh, 20 or so. So Heather, can we start at the table at the back there? So, and, and how we want you to do this is, um, we want to be able to, because we're going to write it up there, so we just want a word or two to describe the driver, but you want to give us a little bit of narrative to explain the background to it, um, so that we're able to uh, understand that as we go forward. So what did you guys come up with as your top driver? Thirst for development. Thirst for development. Okay, good. That's very clear, right? Okay, do you want to say anything more about that, or do you think that's... Good. Any questions about that driver? Does that all mean the same thing to you, right? So let me ask you some questions, right? Okay. Whose thirst is it? Tell us more about, is it like that you as a community have a thirst for development or is it that other people see you as a great place to do development or what? Developers have a thirst for development. The high cost of living okay. all within right. the city. We said loss of younger generations or populations. Okay. All right. So the loss of younger population generation. All right. Any questions, clarification on that? That's pretty clear, right? Okay, thank you. We actually, for our, for our top one, we came up with a combination because um, they really do kind of go together, public transportation and affordable housing together to attract Okay, so right people. But what we want to do, we'll separate those, okay? okay? We know you're just trying to get two in on your one go. <laughs> you know, we've done this before, right? Okay. Okay, public <laughs> transportation. <laughs> this may be covered uh, in the first, but we uh, stated it slightly differently, which is implications of being a destination. Okay, good. Yeah, that, that might be here. That might be worth teasing out, right? Because you're not just a destination for development, but for summer, people, the lake, all those type of things as well, right? That's correct. Okay, good. Uh, lake effect, as, hey. a, as a driver for recreational activities. Resource development for an aging demographic. Okay. Um, so maybe, could we change that to infrastructure for aging demographic? 
can we change that to infrastructure? Because I don't, resource development may not be clear for people, right? But I think the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll stick with that one. <laughs> uh, we said technology advancements is the driver and then some of the consequences, if you will, are with, uh, with the result of online shopping and work at home and all the technology, uh, we need to have more flexibility in the real estate. We've got a lot of empty buildings. We said the aging population, and um, we've added a whole new element of the aging population with our current development. To change number nine to say increasing quantity of the aging okay. population. We don't want to state that they're getting larger. <laughs> <laughs> then, Thank you for catching that. And I'll move on to my next, would be the uh, dramatic uh, racial demographic changes coming at us and how our city may or may not be prepared for that. Okay. Yes. If you look at those figures nationally, right, uh, this room doesn't yet reflect that. Uh, our second biggest uh, thing was traffic and accessibility to 394 and downtown and traffic. And we talked about a number of points on that. And yep. delivery, the number of delivery vehicles in the neighborhoods, uh, FedEx and UPS and the post office and Uber and times every house on your block. So, Okay, we were talking about affordable housing and mostly relative to the, the way to be able to attract a younger population as well as workers into the city. Ours is uh, the other side of that, which is an aged group doing the planning here. But tonight? Not just tonight, <laughs> but generally here. Uh -huh. So if you got an aged group doing planning, are they thinking about what the next group is going to want. Uh -huh. I get it. Yeah. Okay. We agreed here that the number one driver of change in Waisara now is a high cost of land. This is a popular culture for young people. We're, we're talking about seeing some of that in our neighborhoods, that they're staying, they're adding on or rebuilding their houses because they want to be here. Well, I just wanted to comment on um, or expand on the thirst for development because we did go on to talk about how that affects um, our ecology because the more we build, the, the more trees that come down and um, which also affects our, um, our water quality and our, um, how else would you phrase it, the, I'm sorry. And, and the, just the environment in general, the balance of nature. Proliferation of uh, entertainment options in Park. restaurants, bars, uh, parks, theaters, um, to draw from outside resources. Okay. The challenge we have in this town for historic preservation um, in competition with progress. Yep. So I don't know exactly, maybe the whole group as a whole can figure out how to say that, but um, just maintaining the historic heritage of this town while also making room for progress. Is, I, it, is it about tension in redevelopment? Tension between... Tension between preservation and development? Sh sure. Right, so that's by your assessment, right, after some thoughtful discussion, group intelligence, at least your top level 20 key drivers shaping the future of this community, right? So before we go tonight, we want to do one more thing with you. Uh, we're going to ask you to do one more thing, which is we're going to ask you to, um, to uh, I guess, rank these drivers or to, to rate the drivers on a scale, right? So we're going to give you a handout to do this, right? Um, but the scale is going to be two different dimensions. So one is going to be about importance. And the scale will be 1 to 10, um, 1 being low importance for the future. So we know these are all important, right? So this is the top 20. But we're now going to ask you to, to tease this out a little bit further, right? So of those 20, which are the ones you would say are the lowest importance and the highest importance for the future of this community? 